Uh, welcome everybody um, here tonight. My name's Phil Jones and I'm from Wired Sussex. And it's, um, it is really good to see so many people here tonight. Such a lovely day out there. Even I was tempted to maybe head down the beach instead of coming here and I'm a speaker. But uh, it's great to see you all here tonight. Um, this is um, the introduction to the Brighton Catapult and one of its key themes, um, the Internet of Place. And it's really um, a whistle-stop tour through um, some of the ideas behind the catapult, how to get involved in the catapult. And uh, we've got presentations from some of the key existing partners of the catapult. It's um, not about going very deep into the subject. We haven't got time for that. And there'll be plenty of opportunities uh, to do that. Um, in the future. So it's about um, uh, breadth, not depth tonight. But I hope you'll bear with us, and I hope everybody will get something out of tonight. Um, I'm going to rock through my presentation because I've got about 40 minutes worth of information to get over in 20 minutes. Um, don't worry if you don't catch everything because each one of you will email out with links, information, uh, the stuff that we've got. Um, on the slides, uh, so you can peruse it at your leisure. And we're also being, uh, or, or the presenters are being uh, filmed tonight. So at some point uh, in the future, you'll also be able to watch this on YouTube at your pleasure. So I'm going to talk about four things tonight. What the catapult is, what it isn't, who's already involved, and how you can get involved. OK, what it is. Um, it's not that kind of catapult, by the way, but there might be a Dennis the Menace aspect to it, I think. Um, catapults have been a key part of government innovation strategy for a number of years. They were actually um, developed uh, initially as a concept under the Labour administration, so a couple of governments ago, uh, by a guy called Herman Hauser. And what he said was that there's an opportunity for the British economy in terms of focusing on a number of areas um, and developing centres which brought together technology and innovation to get some kind of significant economic value for the UK economy around those areas. And what he said was those areas need to be defined by... Um, subjects where the UK already has a strong track record, um, subjects or areas where the market can be measured globally in the billions of pounds or billions of dollars, and areas where, um, where the supply chain can be maintained in the UK from uh, the research element to the product element. So it won't be offshored if the UK puts resources uh, into developing innovation. Um, so that was his idea. Uh, the Labour administration liked it. The, the, the um, coalition administration liked it even more um, and decided to make these things happen and christen them catapults. So in effect... Uh, catapults are world-class, or aim to be, world-class technology and innovation centres where the research expertise of universities, um, the capacity and opportunities of large corporations, and the agility and the innovation potential of small businesses can come together, can work together on particular areas. And currently... There are seven national catapults, um, and the last catapult to be launched was the digital catapult. It was only launched last November uh, in London, and there it is on the Eastern Road, opposite the British Library, quite close to Google's new headquarters, so probably something fairly uh, significant about that. Even before it launched, the digital catapult said that it wanted a regional policy as well. So it wanted three uh, regional centres of excellence which it would 
uh, pump prime in terms of funding, but also encourage other funders to support as well. Um, and it invited uh, the local enterprise partnerships across the UK uh, to bid to host uh, one of those three catapults. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, our uh, local enterprise partnership is Coast to Capital, and it has a responsibility, as a government-given responsibility, to develop economic strategy in its economic area. And you can see the Coast to Capital region there. It stretches kind of nearly but not quite to Portsmouth that way, nearly but not quite to Eastbourne that way, and up into South London, up into Croydon that way. And you can see Brighton is at the centre of it, as is Gatwick Airport. So Coast to Capital decided to put together a bid, uh, and Wired Sussex, the universities and uh, large corporations, but also a number of um, small digital businesses collaborated in helping us put that bid together. And I see some of the small digital businesses who did some of that workshopping with us here in this room. And I'm pleased to say that that bid was successful. So of the three um, uh, lo local catapults, one is in uh, Sunderland for the northeast, one is in... Um, uh, Bradford for Yorkshire, and there's one in Brighton for this southern area. It was very competitive, 30 um, uh, LEPs bid for the three catapults, so it was a very competitive bid. And it's, a, 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 I think, a real credit, not just to the people who put the bid together, but also to the cluster in Brighton and the impact that it's beginning to have in terms of its growth, but also its innovation culture, but crucially its collaboration culture as well. And that was a key, key element of the bid. Okay, what a catapult is not. First of all, it's not a funding body. So it's not a place you go as a business to say, give me some money, I want to develop a product. Um, it can support funding bids and it can resource uh, research and development, but it doesn't hand over funding to individual businesses. If you are a business in, interested in funding, incidentally, I'd recommend we've, Wired Sussex has uh, a workshop with Innovate UK uh, in July, specifically about how to bid for funding from Innovate UK. And if you're interested in funding routes for research and development and innovation, new products and services as an individual business, then I recommend you come along to that. It's not a workspace. So it's called a centre, and it is a centre, but it's a centre where corporates, university expertise, small businesses, and external expertise that we bring in from outside come together to work on particular projects or to uh, showcase ideas and concepts, products, services, and innovations. And it's not about general business support. So if you need general business support, there are other places to go to. This is about innovation-driven growth or innovation-driven success or creating innovation-driven value. If you're interested in general business support, I do recommend Coast Capital's website, which has a, something called the Business Navigator on it, which is a way, as its name suggests, for businesses to understand and make sense of all the different uh, ways that they might be able to gain and get success for uh, business support um, from different agencies. So, in brief, it's a collaborative digital R&D centre. And the emphasis is on the D. The emphasis is on development. So the emphasis is on helping people with ideas take those ideas to market. And the D is for digital as well, I guess, and the D is for data. Okay, who is involved? At the top there, we've got Coastal Capital, as I mentioned. They won the bid, and they have the contract with uh, uh, Biz um, to host uh, the, um, the centre in Brighton. Now, the two lead delivery partners are Wired Sussex and the University of Brighton. Um, and there's three uh, current key corporates, uh, or two corporates and a, 
um, a big local success story, I guess, in, in Brandwatch. They probably wouldn't like me calling them a corporate at this point in time. American Express and Gatwick Airport. And what they're, they're going to be talking a little later, but they're able to bring some of the opportunities and challenges that they face to the um, catapult in order for businesses to work with them to solve those and for those small businesses to gain some value from that. And then besides the University of Brighton, there's currently three other universities who are involved, the University of Chichester, University of Sussex, and the University of Surrey. Um, so those are the partners who are involved. And, and um, of course, at the bottom, uh, sorry, nearly forgot them, uh, Brighton and Hove City Council. Brighton and Hove City Council supported the bid um, and have been supportive of what we call the pre-production period. That period, um, and anyone who's done a pitch that's been successful knows about it, that period after you've been successful, when you've popped the champagne corks and all had a good time, and then suddenly you get into the grind of the discussion about what exactly the deliverables are, what exactly you need to do, and how you need to do it. So they've been very supportive around that element. Why you might want to get involved. You might want to get involved if you're in the business or want to be in the business of creating new products and services by accessing the resources, the knowledge, and the opportunities that the universities, um, the uh, corporates, and other small businesses can bring to the table. It's really a model which is about collaborative R&D. And it's really a model about sharing the benefits of that collaborative R&D. And that's important, I think, for small businesses because one of the, uh, as, as some of you may know, you know, Wired Sussex was involved in the Brighton Fuse research. And one of the findings of the Brighton Fuse research, which is often not remarked upon very much, is that small digital companies in Brighton are very good at creating value. They're very innovative. They're very good at coming up with new ideas. They're not so good at capturing that value, at benefiting from it. So that value either dissipates or it goes to large corporates. We see this catapult as an intervention to start to change that. So we see the small businesses that get involved with this as absolutely at the center of what we're trying to do. At the end of the day, to be honest, the large corporates can afford their own R&D budgets. Universities can access them in other ways. It's the SMEs, it's the small digital businesses in Brighton that have all the great ideas that don't manage to make them really fly that this is based at. How can you get involved? I love actually this. I mean, for those of a certain age, this is what, apparently, what the Beano is like these days. It has a kind of Minecraft-type catapult, um, and you can win iPod touches and things like that. I'm not sure that's the solution for a comic in the digital age, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, how you can get involved? OK, you can, you, as I said at the beginning, these are early days for the catapult, very early days. Um, so we're still working out uh, a model which enables um, anyone who wants to get involved to get involved. So bear with us. But over the next two or three months, we're holding a host of events and activities, which some of which uh, look at specific projects, digital currencies, um, technology and placemaking, that we think have value. We'll be hosting a number of drop-in events, and uh, we're still looking for a place to base our Brighton catapult. As, my, as, no, as a number of you know, one of the biggest challenges is finding workspace in Brighton. In the short term, it will be based at Wired Sussex's uh, studio, the fuse box. So that will be its short-term home, but um, we have ambitions and we are uh, engaged with numerous uh, agents uh, to make sure that we find somewhere uh, bigger and better. But there will be a number of events held at the fuse box, there will be a number of activities, and there will be some activities coming up later in the year which feature some of those core corporates that we talked about. Um, when we develop projects, and you're welcome to develop your own projects, but when we develop projects, um, you 
can get involved, and we'll make sure that you know how to sign up to um, be alerted to the projects as we develop them. And you can bring projects and ideas to us. So absolutely, if you've got ideas which you think um, within your business or as an individual or as a startup, you think have got traction and might fit with what we're trying to do, by all means, bring the ideas to us. Email us, drop in, phone us. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I would recommend, we do have uh, a, a page on the National Catapult website, and I do recommend if you're interested in being kept up to date um, that you um, sign up uh, here to, to, be, um, to be kept up to date about the latest activities and events that we'll be running. I just want to, um, so, so that's a broad overview, and I just want to drill down a bit now with um, a practical example. Because earlier, I talked about the University of Surrey being one of the partners to this project. And it's not specifically the University of Surrey, it's the 5G Innovation Centre at the University of Surrey, and there's a picture of it. Now, it's received £73 million of investment thus far, and um, 5G is obviously the next stage of connectivity from 4G, and I know many of you may be thinking, I can't even bloody get 4G in Brighton. Why is he talking about 5G? The ambition for the UK is to roll out, start rolling out 5G connectivity from 2020. This is, um, without doubt, the major research centre for 5G technology in Europe. It's one of the top ones in the world, and it's received a large amount, interestingly, of Chinese funding to support it. What we'll be doing with um, the 5G Innovation Centre at the University of Surrey is bringing a 5G testbed to Brighton to our catapult. 5G is a qualitative change from 4G. It's absolutely razor fast. As it says there, it enables you to download. I've watched them at the center, and they're still in research mode, download a movie to a phone in one and a half seconds. They were quite disappointed at that uh, because they thought that was fairly slow. It's much more stable than any system uh, thus um, thus far, and it has far less latency. They've got a bunch of techie problems to solve, and they really are high-level techies there. That's all they care about, solving those technical problems, and good for them. The, the thing that we can do is help SMEs work out how to create products and services, create value off of 5G. So if you're an app developer, if you work in mobile, if you're a games developer, this will be an opportunity for you to test what you do and what you might do on a system in Brighton before the rest of the country, in fact, before the rest of most of the world, and give you a head start on that kind of technology. So that, I think, is some of the opportunities that we hope to bring to businesses in this city. I want to finish up by just mentioning uh, the Internet of Place. The Internet of Place was one of the, was the core theme of our bid. And um, I know we've got, in a minute after me, we've got a, a video of uh, Gillian Youngs, who's a professor of digital economy at the University of Brighton. And she's much more eloquent about, um, about the Internet of Place and what it means than I am, so I'm going to give you the uh, plebs version, if you like. Um, and the Internet of Place is the Internet of Things, so the idea, which is hot news at the moment, that you can embed digital technology in physical objects and connect them together, um, but it adds people to that process. So it says, actually, we want to foreground how people use the technology and how people benefit from the technology. And I think that plays to one of the strengths of Brighton, which is very strong in the user experience domain. 
And that's a really important thing that is recognized uh, nationally in terms of Brighton. And in terms of the place, it adds context. So in shorthand, the Internet of Things, the Internet of Place is the Internet of Things plus people plus context. Uh, some of you may have seen this article in The Guardian about our catapult, which is a fairly good attempt at uh, explaining the value of the Internet of Place. We think the Internet of Place is, is an area where we as a city and uh, a digital cluster and the university partners and corporate partners can really start to own that space and be seen as national and international leaders in that space. We see it as an opportunity to move beyond that old dichotomy which was you either have physical or you have the virtual world and look at ways that when you bring them together you can create real benefit and real value. So we're really excited about the idea of the Internet of Place. It really plays uh, uh, with some of the issues and concerns around our, uh, with our core um, corporate partners. Um, and you can start to think about some of the things, I don't know, that you can start to imagine. So what, what would an app store for a city look like? Or what if you were somewhere like Gatwick where you didn't own all the uh, infrastructure and connectivity, but at times emergencies and things like that needed to access it? Um, and the, uh, I suppose the key thing if you think about something like an airport is it's the same place, but the way you as an individual relate to it means something different. So if you're flying out, um, your needs are often about uh, getting there, but also uh, about getting, uh, uh, buying stuff, killing a couple of hours, keeping the kids quiet, getting on the plane, that kind of stuff. But when you land, actually you want to get through and out as quickly as possible. Same person, so same place, different context, different needs. And that's the kind of thing that I think is interesting about the uh, Internet of Place. So that's my uh, two pennies worth on uh, Digital Catapult. As I said, it's early days. Um, this is the first of a series um, of events, and this is an overview. But um, by all means, um, contact us and talk to us and engage with us because we want you to help us shape this catapult. We want to co-create and co-design the projects and the activities that go on there. Um, that's my lot. Thank you very much. <laughs>